Member Statements. I recognize the member for Timmins. I thank you very much, Mr. Speaker. I rise today in order to uh, tell the House that uh, Noront, a mining company uh, in Ontario, has made a decision in regards to where they're going to more than likely uh, put their ferrochrome facility, and they chose the community of Sault Ste. Marie. Uh, just so people know, originally it started with four communities, Thunder Bay, Sudbury, Timmins, and Sault Ste. Marie. Uh, it went down to two, Timmins and Sault Ste. Marie, and now it, uh, they made that particular decision. I don't think this particular file is over, and I just want to read comments that were made by our mayor of the city of Timmins, uh, Mr. Peary, who says, we're still in the game. They'll need a partner with far deeper pockets, and Glencord would be an example of a partner that, although there's others, he told reporters, so it gives us time to continue to affect the decision. Because we all know building this first chromite mine is probably a better part of eight to ten years away, so a lot of things are going to happen between now and the actual construction of the mine. First, we need to get a road, which means to say we need an agreement with First Nations because they have to be able to benefit from any uh, agreement that comes from development on their lands. Then they've got to build a nickel mine, and once a nickel mine is built, then they're going to go to the chromite facility, uh, so the chromite pit. So it's going to take some time before we're there. It's going to take uh, somebody with a lot of money to build a ferrochrome facility because you're talking about uh, pretty close to upwards of a billion dollars. Uh, so the city of Timmins will continue what it does. Uh, we will work hard in order to try to do what's right uh, for Noront or whoever builds that, uh, that particular facility. And what's good for Ontario and Timmins will continue to push, along with their mayor, our federal member and myself, and our economic development people in our chamber, uh, to try to get that decision uh, so that eventually it does come to the city of Timmins. Thank you. Member Statements, the member for Richmond Hill. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. May is Asian Heritage Month in Canada. I attended the first Asian Heritage Celebration Gala in Richmond Hill last Sunday. It is organized by the Canadian Multicultural Council. CMC represents over 20 Asian, Asian multicultural associations with the objective of preserving and promoting Asian culture and heritage. The gala recognizes several Asian cultures, including cultural performances from Thailand, Taiwan, Korea, Cambodia, Japan, and many others. They also honored six women in leadership, showcasing how they have contributed to the vibrant multicultural society of Canada. The highlight of the evening is the presentation of 10 awards to recipients who are the role model in the society. They have paved way for the younger generation and inspire them through their own examples. CMC and World Vision also presented a special award this year, the 2019 World Vision Canada Diversity and Philanthropy Award was presented to Mr. Stephen Wu. They thank him for bringing love from Canada to places that need more blessings. He helped finding sponsors for 42 children and fundraise over 160,000 for World Vision in 2018. We all had a great evening. What a great, great way to kick off the Asian Heritage Month. Thank you. Thank you. Member Statements, the member for Humber River, Black Creek. Thank you very much, Speaker. It's Nursing Week, and I'd like to deeply thank nurses everywhere for their work in improving and saving lives. This Conservative government's move to slash funding from public health will impact public health nurses and their important work. As well, this funding can put breakfast programs at risk in Toronto. There are over 50 breakfast programs serving 17,000 daily nutritious meals in my riding of Humber River, Black Creek. I would like to recognize and thank those who make meal programs available throughout my community, including public schools such as Blacksmith, Chalk Farm, Daystrom, Dairydown, Firgrove, Gosford, Graysdale, Gulfstream, Lamberton, Shoreham, Stanley, Topcliffe, and York Woods. Catholic elementary schools such as St. Andre, St. Augustine of Canterbury, St. Charles Garnier, St. Francis de Sales, St. Jane Francis, St. John the Evangelist, St. Jude, St. Rock, St. Simon, St. Wilfred. Middle schools such as Brookview Middle School, Elia Middle School, Humber Summit Middle School, Oakdale Park Middle School, and public high schools such as the Alternative Caring and Safe School, C.W. Jeffries, Emory, Emory Advance, and Westview, Catholic high schools, such as James Cardinal McGuigan, Monsignor Fraser, 
St. Basil the Great College School, and community organizations such as the San Romanoe Revitalization Association. And if I've missed you, thank you. I thank each and every one of you who make these programs a reality, and I'm calling on this government to reverse the disastrous cuts to public health. Our children are counting on you. Member statements, the member for Whitby. Thank you, uh, Speaker. Thank you very much. This uh, past weekend, I participated in Doors Open Whitby, and one of the facilities that I did visit was the Whitby Rail Maintenance Facility for GO Transit locomotives and passenger coaches. And I was joined by my colleague, the member for Topical Centre, and the parliamentary assistant to the Minister of Transportation. And the tour speaker was eye-opening, to uh, say the least. There's over 500,000 square feet of maintenance buildings and over 21 kilometers of track at the site with 68 switches. Speaker, this, this particular facility is just amazing because it, it's created 350 jobs in the town of Whitby. It's uh, contributing to the local economy and it's a testament of what uh, a best practice in terms of maintenance facilities. Speaker, I can assure you that it's a far more pleasant experience to ride in the GO Transit coach, which I do every morning, than to examine it from the underside, which I did from one of the uh, maintenance <laughs> pits. I'd like to confirm for you, Speaker, that uh, my visit assured me that as hard as the Minister of Transportation, the Honourable Jeff Bjork, is working to get Terrell Transit moving, this incredible maintenance facility in Whitby will certainly keep the GO Transit system moving for the residents in Oshawa, Whitby, Pickering and Ajax. Thank you, Speaker. Member statements, the member for London West. Uh, thank you, Speaker. Speaker, on Friday, May 3rd, thousands of Canadian youth from 85 cities participated in a national climate strike. Emma Lim, a student at Sir Frederick Banting Secondary School in London West, was one of the coordinators of the national strike and has been holding Friday climate strikes locally for weeks. Around the world, young people like Emma are demanding that governments fulfill their commitments to the Paris Agreement. Their messages simple. Climate change is a result of human activity, and urgent action now is needed to fix it. With Canada's climate warming at twice the rate of the rest of the world, I applaud the efforts of these students. I am also encouraged by municipal and community initiatives to reduce carbon emissions. Last month, the City of London joined a growing number of municipalities that have declared a climate emergency. And on Monday, May 13th, Green Economy London will launch the newest of seven Ontario hubs to support businesses to achieve sustainability targets. Hosted by the London Environmental Network, the goal of Green Economy London is to demonstrate that a more sustainable economy is not only possible, but will improve the bottom line. Speaker, in the face of a provincial government that is dangerously out of touch on the need for climate action, I'm proud of the leadership of London City Council, Green Economy London, and students like Emma Lim to create a more livable future for all of us. Thank you, Speaker. Thank you. Member statements. The member for Flamborough, Glenbrook. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. And I'm very proud to rise today to applaud our government for taking action to properly manage excess and contaminated soil while holding polluters accountable. Our government is introducing legislation that will toughen rules around the excavation, hauling, and dumping of excess soil. Developers, haulers, and sites receiving soil will be required to register every load being moved for quantity and quality. The soil will be tested on site for contaminants. Potential fines for violators have been raised to $200,000, and trucks not in compliance will lose their license plates. This proposed legislation is a direct result of contaminated soil concerns raised by residents in my riding of Flamborough Glanbrook. It's alleged that more than 24,000 loads of soil have been dumped at watered down garden supplies since last summer. Since my election, I have been working with residents and ministry staff to address concerns about the illegal dumping of soil in Flamborough Glanbrook. Excess and tainted soil can negatively impact groundwater farmland, and other sensitive areas. These new rules will penalize polluters and make it easier for soil to be reused. Jim Whale, and a farmer who lives near the site, praises these changes. He's glad to see a government that is listening to residents and finally taking action.
Member statements. The member for Brampton East. East. Speaker, I rise today to talk about names. My name is Guratan Singh. It means the jewel of the bringer of light into darkness. It connects me to my Sikh spirituality and my culture. It's my North Star and it reminds me of who I am. I think of all the beautiful names that exist in this world. Names like Mansam, which means the literature of the heart. Names like Abdullah, which means the servant of God. Indigenous and First Nation names like Tohrewate. A name is more than just a name. When we are born, it's one of the first things that we recognize, one of the first words we learn to say, and it's how the world identifies us. It's powerful. That's why we say our names properly and have them said properly. But for many people with diverse names, they often live their lives with their names mispronounced. They often respond by changing their names and often anglicizing it out of shame. I once met a young student. His name was Japman. It means the mind which is lovingly imbued towards the divine, a mind that meditates. He pronounced it as Japman. And when I corrected him, he laughed embarrassingly. embarrassingly. He laughed like this because after years of having his name mispronounced, he was ashamed of hearing his name said the correct way. Often this issue arises in the classroom where we've made a lot of progress, but the reality is that the staff in our school still don't fully reflect the diversity of the classroom. And the result is that students often have their names mispronounced, which often renders them invisible. This has real consequences on students. It hurts them academically, it impacts their confidence, and the problems that can often follow them throughout their life. So I rise to say, let's celebrate our names. Let's celebrate the unique differences that make, it, make us who we are. And let's work to create a society where our names are signs of pride, signs to really hold within us, and something that we can all celebrate collectively. Thank you, Speaker. Member statements. The member for Carleton. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Earlier this year, I had the pleasure of touring the Nordian facility. While this facility is located in the riding of Kanata Carleton, many of their top executives, as well as numerous frontline workers, are proud residents of my riding of Carleton. Nordian has been a leading provider of Cobalt, Cobalt 60 to global customers for more than 70 years. Cobalt 60 is an essential radioisotope to the global medical community, benefiting the lives of millions of people in countries around the world. Whether it is used in the sterilization of single-use medical equipment or used in radiation-based treatment of cancers and other diseases, the importance of Cobalt 60 to the global healthcare sector cannot be overstated. Cobalt 60 is produced right here in Ontario, thanks to Ontario's nuclear fleet and companies such as Bruce Power. In fact, Cobalt 60, produced by Bruce Power, a close partner of Nordian, will fulfill 50% of the world's supply needs and will help to deliver affordable cancer therapies to more than 10 million people each year worldwide. Thank you again to Nordian for inviting me to tour your facility. Our government will continue to work hard in order to make Ontario open for business. Thank you. Thank you. Member Statements. The member from Mississauga, Aaron Mills. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Last Sunday, I had the pleasure of welcoming the Honourable Minister Raymond Chu, Minister of Seniors and Accessibility in my riding of Mississauga, Aaron Mills, at UTM campus, where we jointly attended the Chinese Advisory Council of United Ways and the Department of uh, Sociology. It was incredible to see hundreds of seniors from the Chinese community in a room backed with so many academics, practitioners, and policymakers, all of whom were focused on the topic of aging process and lived experience of Chinese seniors in Canada. The symposium had three aims. Firstly, understanding how Canadian context shapes the experience of aging. Secondly, developing a deeper understanding of how the Chinese community works together to cope with aging. And thirdly, it serves as a consulting opportunity, consultation opportunity with officials like Minister Chu and I. I was excited, excited for the opportunity to hear from the Chinese community, thanks to Minister Chu and my colleagues MPPs from Mississauga Center, Mississauga Mountain and Mississauga East Cooksville, who joined us to listen firsthand to the community. Mr. Speaker, our government have been fist, steadfast in our approach, an approach which place, places Ontarians at the centre of our decisions. 
Minister Chu and I would like to thank United Way's Chinese Advisory Council and UTM Sociology for the opportunity to hear from them and to engage in a productive dialogue about the important issues such as seniors' health. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Thank you very much. That concludes our member statements. I was advised that uh, the Minister of Labour might have a point of order. Okay, that's good.